Welcome to Lala Gabin, the It's a Southern Thing chat show where we talk about Southern things. Today, I'm joined by Talia and Ryan and our very special guest, Diane. You may recognize her from our many videos where she plays characters like Grandma Barb, Linda in The Real Church Ladies. Thanks for joining yeah. us. I'm excited to be here. This because, is fun. I get to be myself. Yeah. Our topic today is Southern Grandmas, the myth, the legend. Because here on It's a Southern Thing, we, we help perpetuate this this legend of Southern Grandmas as being this this like uber uh, focal point of the family, this big matriarchal presence. Is it perpetuating a myth or is it it's, educating the masses? It's both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but the kind of grandmother I really am, it's a myth. <laughs> well, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's do it. Intro, intro dance. dance. <laughs> 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 this is your first intro dance. <laughs> so one thing we should probably establish, Diane, you are a Southern grandma. Yes. Yes. I have seven grandchildren. Seven. Ooh, seven, seven and under. I so we had them all high. right, like bam, all, bam, 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 bam. All seven of them are under the age of seven. Seven and under, yeah. Seven. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So seven. you are expertly qualified to be discussing yeah. this topic. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, are. I, no, I, I, feel I, like, I am. There you go. I, I feel like any grandma questions we have today, you can answer them, and that yeah. will be law. Yeah, we'll yeah. Just let you but go. it's like what you write. I, I'm just not that. I'm not a cook. So what? What kind of no. southern grandma are you? Well, you know, like we portray like different ones, like the ones that give kids everything, and like the one we were talking about earlier. That you know, they just it doesn't matter what the parents say. Like in grandma unionize, it's like we're gonna do what we wanna do. <laughs> I'm not that way. I mean I kind of we do a little bit of extra. Like like <laughs> when we have cousins camp at our house, bedtime kind of is a little <laughs> negotiable. Nap time uh, one ish, you know, so it's like uh, but that but really I'm more where I like to spend time with them. Because four of my seven live in Nashville. And so I don't get to see them as much as the ones that are here. Mm -hmm. So when we're all together, I don't want to be the strict grandma, but I'm not the let's just run wild and free either. But I want to, I want to spend time with them. I want to do things with them. Um, but I've never made cornbread. <gasps> I've never made biscuits. <laughs> so I'm not really the cook grandmother. You're the fun grandma. I'm the fun grandmother, I Ooh. like to think. And, you know, when you've got a kindergarten teacher, as your, a former kindergarten teacher as your grandmother, the whole world's a field trip. As a grandmother, this is something that my grandmother used to do, and it was just like known, this is where you're going to be. Every summer, from the end of May to when summer was like two weeks from being over, mm -hmm. all the cousins from the entire family, we mm -hmm. stayed at grandma's house. And we did that for, like, that was our summer camp, like, until we were old enough to go to summer camp. And we would just spend the summer at Grandma's house. She would always be cooking for us. We'd play games outside. We would, you know, go to the park, all this kind of stuff. Is that kind of like the fun Grandma stuff you do? Yeah, I have what, we kind of designate the seven. There's the bigs. There's three of them that are 18 months in there that we got the three bigs, the middles, and the littles. So the bigs, we have cousins camp for, and you have to be potty trained to come to cousins camp. Okay. So that's just the one first yeah. rule. You do like yard decorations. It's like a legit yeah, it, camp. It, 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 oh, it, it, oh, I remember, yeah. 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 So this and is... there's a theme and all that. This summer, the theme is water parks. Ooh. Yeah, I have this bucket Can list I... thing. I was, yeah. saying, I was like, I'm potty but, trained. Uh, but I wanted, there's in Leesburg, Alabama, there's some water park that everybody says is really great. Nobody knows about it. I had never heard of it. But right next to it is an RV park. This is a secret, kind of a secret bucket list. I want to take a trip in an RV. I, I've never been on a trip in an RV. I don't know why. I just do. And so I thought it would be fun cousins camp to get, because now they have RVs that you can rent like Airbnbs. I did my research. Oh. They set it up. I wouldn't have to drive it. It would be sitting there ready for me. And they just weren't sure that grandma needed to go by herself because Dub, who's my husband, D did not, Dub was not part of this adventure. And so they really were concerned about me being in the RV by myself with three children uh, in the uh, middle of somewhere. I think you got it. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> So anyway, so we've changed it, and now we're going to go to different water parks. But we've had last year we did Mo Willems and Author, and mm -hmm. we did all like pigeon things. I took them downtown, and we rode the bus. 
We had pigeon cookies. They made pigeon hats. I mean, like, so it's like a field trip. Thing. This is amazing. The first year was Very Hungry Caterpillar, and it was all, it's usually related to a book, if I can. And they have matching t-shirts, kind of family reunion-ish. Now, the middles have only had one, and it was like a mini one to see how they do. And they were the same age when I had the bigs do it, but we went to Paw Patrol Live. <laughs> did the whole Paw Patrol sounds, thing. I, yeah. I'm so personally anyway. so jealous because this sounds so much more thought out. We just went and chilled at Granny's house. No, no, I was no, watching no. The Price is Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching um, what's Wheel the other? Fortune. Matlock. Right. I was yeah, like, yeah. She was like, hey guys, like Matlock's on. And then we had biscuits with grape jelly and watched Matlock. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of, it's just an extension of, it feeds that teaching thing of me since I retired. Yeah. So. I would absolutely trust you in an RV with all of us, though, because between your tap dancing and your constant tennis and everything, like you are more active than all of us combined. Yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, yeah. like it's I know that first, more active and in shape than yeah. I have ever so, been. Yeah. So this concept of what we do on it's a southern thing, like the southern grandma and like all the sort of archetypes that we portray, like how do you relate? to that, if at all. Uh, yeah, I have to really dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, you just, because you've seen them, you've seen them on TV or you've known them, your friends, grandmothers, or, I mean, you you just kind of do it. The um, first one that really went crazy was the Southern Grandma Names. Yeah, the Names one. Mm -hmm. And that is, with my age group, and your first time, that is, that is that's why it went viral. Because people go, what's my name going to be? And they want it to be cute, and they want it to be unique, and you know. And so we were like, yeah, we thought about die because I'm Diane, but my daughter-in-law, who I love dearly, said that's a verb. <laughs> you die, yeah. When you die, I don't want you. I don't want that to be there. And so you know, it, somehow we just kept going with, and we got to D. Now my husband Bill, being William Wad W, my son came up with Dub for him, and that is so perfect for him. So you're D and Dub? D and Dub. I love oh So anyway, gosh. so that's what we are. So there's no Paw Paw. I call him Paw Paw when he's acting old. <laughs> I go, come on, Paw Paw. Yeah. But, so there's no Granny. There's no Mimi, Gigi. It's just D and Dub. I call Lucas Grandpa sometimes. Yeah, you do. That husband Usually when we get up off the couch and we both go, Ugh. We get up <laughs> off the couch and we're like, come on, Grandpa, let's go upstairs. Yeah. That's what we'll Pulls do. out his walker and it starts. Yeah, saying. yeah. So... I don't know, but I love playing something that I'm not really. See, I always thank them after we shoot. <laughs> thank you for letting me play with you today. I mean, it's just it's just play like it. You know, so it's like you think of these gra other grandmas, especially the cooking ones, since I don't cook, you know, <laughs> that I would love to do. I just think it's a grandmother's job is, should not be to discipline. I mean, you don't want them running wild, but it's to create memories. Because we realize that like the oldest grandchildren are going to have totally different memories with us than the, the two littles who are not even a year old yet. You know, I mean, I'm going to be seven years older. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so it's grandmothers should just be creating memories. And if that's cooking with them or watching Madlock with them, watching or, you know, just have memories with them. Yeah, so you've like, you've, you've transcended. Yeah. <laughs> You transcended like the parental role, and now mm -hmm. you can just be like it's all the fun. fun stuff. Yeah. And then without the like discipline. Yeah. That's why they always love yeah, grandparents better. Yeah, that's true. Is that <laughs> why my parents want me to have kids so bad? They want to like spoil children. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have said this about my mom a lot, but I don't know that I've said it to her face, so I don't know if she's gonna like this or not. But <laughs> I always say that she was born to be a grandma, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. She, I grew up and she was, you were strict and it's fine. <laughs> it's cultural background and everything. Don't be upset. <laughs> but I mean, part of, it's part of the culture and everything. So I did, I had, you know, a little bit of a more strict and sheltered um, childhood. And the moment I put my first child into my mom's arms. The moment she held that baby, she became a different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's like instantly she remembered. She's like, oh, I don't have to. I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to be strict. I can have all the fun. And now she is she spoils the kids. Just love, mm -hmm. but they love 
spending time with her. And I love that. Like, but it's just so funny to watch, honestly, as her daughter to watch it happen. Because I'm like, you know, they asked for stuff and she's like, absolutely. And I was like, she wouldn't have let me do that. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't get to do that. And then I tell her and be like, I never got to do that. And she's like, well, you were my kid. Move out of the way. Me and grandbabies. <laughs> like, yeah. and I, but it's, it's wonderful. Like, it makes me so happy. And she seems far more relaxed now that she doesn't have to deal with me anymore. So, <laughs> I mean, I think it worked out for both of us. <laughs> yeah, my, I was not a good yeah. kid. My parents became grandparents fairly recently. Um, I have a niece and a nephew. And you can see, like, now, like, you could see the switch happen with them now that they're Grammy and Poppy mm -hmm. and how they treat the grandkids versus how they treat us. <laughs> like, what? This yeah. was in you the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I look, I look at some of the things I do and my brother or sister would go, Mother and Daddy would never let us do that. I was like... Yeah. yeah. Mom, it's just so, different. Yeah. Well, it's the parents' jobs to provide all the structure. As grandparents, mm -hmm. it's like, right? It's like... When you go over to your friend's house and you're like, I'm comparing children to dogs now. Like, we love dogs, but I don't want the responsibility. I just want to go play with someone else's. Yeah. And I really Speaking don't, um, and I'm not going, this is not meant to be a downer, so don't go, oh. But um, my mom's mom died when she was three. So I never knew that grandmother. And then my other grandmother died when I was five. So I really don't have a huge memory bank. Yeah of a grandmother, you know? And so it's like, but I have very vivid memories of her, you know, of, of Nanny. And it, you know, just, um, this is so weird. She was very arthritic and she taught me how to dust when I was little and she only used Lemon Pledge. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know if that's a sponsor on. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should not, yeah, I, if you're watching, yeah. hey, if you guys <laughs> want to. see Johnson. But I will not use any other thing to dust with. Because you smell, you know, do y'all know what I'm saying? When you smell yeah, something, yeah. it takes you immediately back to something. Uh, and it just, um, and I don't, I'm not a really great housekeeper, but I, I'm really weird about dust. Like, I dust a lot. Uh, yeah. Please don't look at any of my furniture. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Well, I was, I was, I was going to ask you, because I think, you know, being influenced by your own experiences as mm -hmm. a grandchild, um, and I think that we all have different experiences with our own grandparents. Um, like I didn't live near my grandparents. So um, seeing them was like seeing them maybe once or twice a year. So, which is, which is a totally different experience from a lot of what we portray in this Southern thing with the Southern grandmas of being like very entrenched in the family life. Mm. Um, and so I didn't have that experience. I don't know what everybody else is like. My, my dad's mom, uh, my dad's parents lived in Maryland and Pennsylvania and my mom's, my mom's parents also lived in Maryland but were from Puerto Rico. So, you know, I have grandma and grandpa and I have abuela and abuelo. So, like, it was completely, you know, sort of a non-traditionally Southern experience for me. Yeah. Um, also, they were not here. Yeah. So, um, seeing them was, like, a special occasion and also, like, we didn't have the opportunity to really, like, be, like, as close as, as when you see people who basically grew up with their grandparents mm -hmm. and, like, go over and stay at their houses yeah. every summer yeah, and that right. kind of thing. Like, that's an experience that I don't have. So, like, it, and you were saying, like, you know, you have some that live in Nashville and you have some that live here. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference there in, like, how y'all treat them? Um, no, it's all the same. Because I, I am really proud of the way my children are raising their children. It, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a really cool thing to watch. And so... Get a little teary. Um, so, but like when we go to Nashville, like when we went during the pandemic, we they have a garage apartment, and so that's where we were able to stay. And we'd sit at night, and so we did everything in the backyard. And then at night at bedtime, because I always read them, I just love it's the teacher and love books. <laughs> so, because I couldn't hold them, I couldn't put them in my lap. I mean, we were really we were being very locked down. And so it was a special occasion for us to be there, but I just need to see my people, you know. So they're sitting, I'm sitting like at the table, and they're sitting on the grass, and it's like kindergarten story time all over again, you know. So it just, um, you know, I, I take things to do with them because I don't see them as often. The ones here, I tend to, 
you know, babysit, go to their ball games. Yeah. So when we go mm -hmm. to Nashville, I want to see all their stuff that they're doing. Yeah. You know, so. I think I had similar, it was the mix of kind of what you had versus this. I had my Southern grandma here, my paternal grandmother who I would, who would babysit and who I'd spend so many weekends at. I have a lot of very vivid memories of, you know, Wheel of Fortune, Murder, She Wrote, Andy Griffith. Um, oh, yeah. So, you yeah, know, so, absolutely yeah. at the house um, all the time. And then the my maternal grandparents lived in Atlanta. And so we would go over very frequently. Um, we don't quite as often, but when my grandparents were alive um, and had Harmony and Hadawaji, where my Korean grandparents, and we'd go over and visit them in Atlanta. But also culturally, it was just a different experience, you know, like it's different when you have one set of grandparents where you can bust up in the door and you can immediately like fly in and it's like a second home. And then my other grandparents, I knew I had to like go and bow and show respect. And yeah. also there was a communication barrier because those grandparents um, didn't speak English. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, growing up with them and knowing that my mom was always translating for us or we just, I got to basically sit there in silence all the time. And it's a really, really interesting experience that I'm grateful for now. I think it was more frustrating when I was younger of constantly being around my grandparents and not being able to feel like I could communicate with them. But what it means is we communicated through actions. I have so many vivid memories of sitting on the floor with my hand mini while she would, we had, she had these giant steel bowls of this big, making pounds and pounds of kimchi. Or like when she would, we would go outside and collect chestnuts and she would steam chestnuts for us. Um, she knew how to say popsicle. And so she always had banana popsicles and she would look at me and she would ask popsicle. Like I have vivid memories or things that I remember. Mm -hmm. Like I would always sit next to her and I would always joke, she'd slap my leg really hard, but she would always just be like slap and pinch. And she'd be like, Ipone, which meant pretty. And so like I have, oh. I think because of that communication barrier, those types of memories are like just locked in as being very special, significant ones because we had to find a different way to communicate. Yeah, yeah I had <laughs> communication, you know, there was a communication barrier with my mom's parents because I didn't speak Spanish and they spoke primarily Spanish. They did speak some English, but their accents were very heavy. Um, but uh, like you're saying, like it was, I, I think that there's a lot of similarities between what we portray on It's a Southern Thing mm -hmm. with my Puerto Rican um, grandparents because it was everything that we do it's like that's them that was them like we mm -hmm. always went there was always food you just you know where you are because of the smell like they were gonna be making like yeah. you know rice and beans and uh, tostones and things like that like you just like it's, it's one of those like you smell it and you, you're instantly transported into like oh I'm in their apartment again um, but yeah like we because we weren't really able to like communicate very well it was always like this non. I remember mean, my my uh, abuela would always like pick us up and like throw up throw us in the air when we were little. You know, I was like, yeah, yeah. she like, must have been really 20, strong. 20, 20, you're like, yeah, woo! Like, <laughs> up, until, up until a it's couple like, of years wow. ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, granted, was like in CrossFit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we needed to laugh because this was about to be the most tear jerking episode <laughs> of this sort of thing ever. I, I didn't want to go that way around. So just, <laughs> just picture an old man throwing me up in the air, catching me. That was, How is my boy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just graduated college. <laughs> uh, but you know, like, but but I am I'm like fascinated by um, like the the southern grandma and like this, especially like how we kind of end up portraying the Southern Grandma on this other thing, seeing as how we all have like very, very different experiences with our own grandparents. Yeah, it's, it's very weird because I'm never in this situation, but I feel like I have probably the more traditional Southern Grandma out mm -hmm. of the group. And that's weird for me because there are certain things that I just know that I experienced growing up and I want, I want to know why. Why was this universally done? Like, um, Diane, not to put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. the cookie tin and it never having cookies, mm -hmm. I want to know why. Why Every time I, I try to sneak Disappointing cookie, every time. Yeah, oh, I try to sneak and get a cookie, and it's just sewing equipment. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Well, my Mimi did yeah. have one of those. Oh, yeah. I why why was that a thing? Why was that a thing? Well, I think it was a thing because 
for me, because my grandparents would have been older than, you know, but yeah. my husband's older than I am, and so his parents were an older grandparent to my children okay. than my mother and dad were. And they had the best, yeah, and I think, you know, and Save the Tin Fool, yeah. and did y'all, I mean, I yeah. think it's coming out of the Depression that they just wouldn't throw oh. anything away, and that butter cookie tin was substantial. Yeah, yeah, it's, and, it's and a so certain what, and, it would, and that was before the days of Tupperware or, and so it was something that you didn't throw it away. What would it be good for? Oh, I don't have a sewing basket. And so they just put put stuff in there. That's just conjecture on my part. I'm gonna take but, it because <laughs> it has bothered me for my 32 years of life, not yeah, being able yeah. to understand why there is no cookies in the cookie tin. But I think the it's, saving of the temple. I think it may have started that, that way, but then eventually all the grandmas got together and decided just to prank the grandkids. Oh, yeah. I, I think it's 100% a prank because that's what yeah. it comes off for. The first time I ever looked inside one, I remember it very vividly. I saw the cookie tin. I eyed it across the room. I said, cookies. And I, like, quietly walked over, and I was real careful <laughs> on how I opened it because, you know, it's, like, tin, so, like, it makes that popping noise. Oh, yeah. I get it open, not a sound, and then I take the top off, look in, needles, threads, Thread. and then my heart sank, and then my grandmother, behind me, never knew she was there. She said, what you looking for? And I said, <laughs> nothing, and I just closed it. <laughs> I closed it now, and now I asked her, I said, is Matlock on? <laughs> <laughs> but see, grandmas have, because um, my husband's from Illinois, so he's not from the South. <gasps> um, he's from the Midwest. I would not call him a Yankee because that would be incorrect. He's from the Midwest. Oh, okay. Okay. So we would, we would take our kids to Illinois to see them. And there's always hidden candy somewhere. Mm. And Meemaw, and they were Meemaw and Pawpaw. And Meemaw had it in the kitchen drawer. And they were the mini, the midgy Tootsie Rolls. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you just opened the drawer and you knew they were there. Even me, I would sneak eat. And so we all, you know, when I see a Tootsie Roll now, I still think, Meemaw had those in her drawer. There's yeah. something, my so. My was butterscotch. Always had the mm -hmm. butterscotch. See, my grand, my granny was um, the strawberry candy that has no name yeah. that no one can find. And it's like yeah, gooey yeah, yeah. in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah the gooey. I, to this day, I don't know where you purchase those. I, I even looked on Amazon. It, it, it's impossible. Oh. Um, but Grandma had those loaded to the deck. You go to church, she was the old lady with the candy. So mm -hmm. at a point in the service, she would take her purse, which was designated for the strawberry candies, and the purse would make its way around oh the entire church. <laughs> And everybody would be like, oh, and it was so normal. They would say, oh, it must be time, mm -hmm, candy. And everybody would be, and pastor would be, you know, preaching. And we'd all have our strawberry candy. We knew 30 minutes was left in the service. So my That's grandmother out. was wintergreen, lifesavers, mm -hmm. wintergreen lifesavers. Sweet story, not to interrupt you. Sorry. No, 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 come on. My grandson sitting next to me in church. And, he, and I, one time I just mentioned orange lifesavers were my favorite. Mm -hmm. And so they keep him quiet. He's seven. Yeah, with candy and drawing and writing. He's got a whole bag that he takes to church. Yeah. So he gets out the lifesavers, and he's eating them. And then he'll look at me and he'll go, orange is next. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, and he hands me the orange one during church. It's like, I may not want a lifesaver, but I'm popping that sucker in. I mean, you know, it's just that orange lifesaver is going in because he, he ate enough to get down to the orange so that I could have one. That's, that's really cute. I know. We're back that's to the tearjerker. I know. I'm sorry. If you want some candy, there's actually some in that thing right there. <laughs> See, that's a fancy yeah. looking butter tin. See, no, yeah, yeah. Like it's real sewing equipment. <laughs> <laughs> now, before they settled on D for you, mm -hmm. did you ever have something set in your mind? You're like, well, I'd like to be called this, or did you mm -hmm. care at all? Well, because I have both both sides. This this is embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it really is. I'm so excited. I know, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm Diane. That's my name. But I also got married the same summer as Diana and Charles. I like following the royal family and all this. I wanted my grandmother name to be Lady Di. Hey. <laughs> yes. You know what? And what you're doing is what my children did when I told them yeah. that. <laughs> and so that's what I went, okay, I can't be Lady Di. So I'll just be die. No, that's a verb. <laughs> yeah. So it's like so. Yeah, you just had to. You deserve. And, and D the feels right now like, because yeah, for so long they don't call you anything. Yeah. 
another friend, she said, I'm just going to see what comes out. It was Ga Ooh. what came out was Gaga because it, but it happened to also be about the time Lady Gaga was becoming famous. Hilarious, but it fits her. And that's what her grandkids call her. But yeah, yeah. But hearing it the first time, mm, music See, to the ears. My grand, my granddad made that mistake on my mom's side. <laughs> he was very much saying, I'm just going to wait. And then whatever they call me, Ooh. that's what I'm going to go with. And so <laughs> and for, you know, three solid years, he was grandpa, whatever. One day he was poking fun at me because I was very small, like slender little boy. He said, and he called me fat boy. So I called him fat boy and he had like a belly. I still call him fat boy to this day. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, yeah. It's so hard. I can't like, it is seared into my brain. <laughs> I walk into the house. I'm like, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had both sides of the spectrum. My mom knew right away she wanted to be called Nana. Very na na mm -hmm. Nana. And so the kids, you know, little bitty, they were like Nana. And she was like, no, no. Nah, no. Nah. <laughs> like, so not now they, it's debate. Nana. And I don't remember how that happened, but then my stepdad is Bapa. So they're Nana and Bapa. And then my my dad was like Grandpa's fine. No little kid can say grandpa. It yeah. does not roll off the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my eldest, I think, said Pinga, which we discovered later might mean something else in slang <laughs> in a different language. That's not important. Um, but that's what stuck. And then they call my stepmom Poppy, like the flower, which I know, uh, but a lot of, there's like a lot of grandpas who have Poppy, ooh. but theirs is Poppy spelled like a flower. So we have Pinga and Poppy, and we have Nana and Bapa, and and then they have Mima and Peepaw on my husband's side. And so just a spectrum of everything that was chosen for them or adamantly drilled into them or just <laughs> yeah. whatever came out of their mouth. Yeah. Like, and then I had Go Go. So my grandparents had Halmani and Halibuji, and then I had Mimi and Papa. She's speaking in tongues, right? And then, <laughs> She's got and a lot. My, my stepdad's grandma, my, my grandma, my stepdad's side, her name was Go Go, but everyone called her Go Go because she, she literally was always on the go. Um, but I mean, that was like her nickname for everyone. Like her friends called her that, family called her that. Yeah. And, which was really charming. But um, if my, I told my teenager, I said, if you get like a parrot that talks, cause I need some semblance of a grandchild that I can communicate with. So if we get a bird, we're gonna teach it to call me Weezer, cause that's what I've always wanted. I'm so lost. So you're I gonna be called, Weezer? I wanna be called Weezer. So um, I love it. Always have. I can do that But I now. wanna know, so what would, yeah. what would y'all's, what would y'all's pop on names be? Uh, Have you thought about it ever at all? Vigo. Okay, that's okay. not surprising at all. Okay. All right, moving, all right, on. moving on. on. See, this is weird because I'm still in this headspace where I don't want kids, but all my friends, uh, my friends are starting to have kids. And if my cats could talk, what would you want them to call you? Right now, I'm Uncle Rai Rai, okay. and so I like Rai Rai. Okay. Rai Rai, that's yeah. cute. I, I, matter of fact, two of my very close friends. Their daughter is just turning two, and she's starting to talk, and she can say Rai Rai. <gasps> See, it, See it, you it, it, yes. Oh, it, I, because I'm the first friend, even like um, outside of mom and dad, I'm the first, you know, person like name to face. She, yeah. they put her, my, our videos on like the big TV, and she's like. Bye bye, bye bye. See. They See, also. You're so excited right now. I, I'm okay, very that excited. Is really, absolutely. I'm like, yes, baby Bobby. Um, <laughs> they also put on Parks of Rec one time, and she saw Z Anzari and was like, bye bye. And they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no, that's not, that's not your uncle Rai Rai. <laughs> but we'll we'll work through that. <laughs> I did teach my niece to call me Uncle Ghostbuster for a minute. <laughs> Out. It just rolls right off the top. Yeah, yeah it's so like, easy. How, Adam. So how'd that work for you? It was like, but it, but it, it was in this context. Who's that? Uncle Ghostbuster. Oh, bless you! You scared that poor child. She's like, Is I must she call him that. She called no, not even not anymore. <laughs> what does she call you now? She just called me Uncle Adam. Oh, mm. uh, Uncle <laughs> Ghostbuster would have been, it would have been so, so much more fun. So I'm gonna Grandpa change. Vigo. Grandpa Vigo, yeah. Grandpa Vigo. Or Grandpa Gozer or Grandpa Peter Venkman. It's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, 
So. Oh goodness. I have a problem. <laughs> you give them. You give them an inch. I mean, there no, he goes. no one is half the half the battle. <clears throat> so what have we learned? The mystery of what it means to be a grandma. Couldn't tell you. Still, I tried. I, America, I tried. I tried to find the questions. We don't have mm -hmm. them. You win this time, grandparents. Yeah. Well, we create a stereotypical Southern grandma, but I don't think there's there's truth in it. I there's think a whole bunch of different grandmas out there. Well, I think you've done a really, really great job at just taking, you've now, even just for us, you've, you've portrayed a variety of grandmas yeah. for us. <laughs> like, yeah. like a we'll variety of different times, from the villain to mm -hmm. like the sweetest to the... The drop, the theater mom, grandma. <laughs> You've played all of these different roles for us now, and the reason it works is because, like any actor playing a role, you find little things you can identify with, or we all know that one person, and you go with that. But I don't really know where I was going with this. But <laughs> I think, sounded good. I think we're just we're very very lucky to have found you. Well, to right. portray one of our favorite grandmas and everything that we do. We are. And it's I been, do like playing with y'all. It's been years now, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. since 2017. Crazy. Whoa. What a time. So you retire from teaching and look what happens. <laughs> now you're famous. <laughs> now. No. <clears throat> Rose <Infamous>. is your <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you for joining us for our Lolly Gavin conversation about Southern grandmas. Join our conversation in the comment section. Let us know what you thought and uh, tell us some fun stories you may have. Ooh, We'd love can't to wait. Them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you guys got some good ones, too. Yeah, some really good ones. We'll see you next time. See, do that again. Let's do it. Come yeah, on. yeah, come on. Put some, put some energy behind it. Sit up a little bit. That was a weird <laughs> one. There it is. There. That was a weird one. Sit up straight, Adam. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>